the adequate notice of this regular meeting as required by the Open Public Meetings Act was provided by the posting, mailing, delivery, and filing of this notice on January 12, 2024. This notice was on that date posted on the bulletin board in the Township Office, sent to the Courier News and TAP into Warren, and filed with the Township Clerk of the Township of Warren, all in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll call the roll now. Mr. Bessay? Mrs. Whitebaum? Ms. Keller? Here. Mr. Malfetta? Here. Mr. Otto? Here. Mr. Tor? Here. Mr. Valentino? Here. Mr. Weinstein? Here. And Mrs. Zahn? Here. We have a quorum. Do I have a second? Second. Call the roll, Ms. Keller? Mr. Malfetta? Yes. Mr. Otto? Yes. Mr. Tor? Yes. Mr. Valentino? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Mrs. Zahn? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Correspondence and information, Dr. Mingo. Thank you, Mrs. Zahn. In the HIB report, there were three investigations at the middle school, zero confirmed, one at Central, one at Mount Horeb, and one at Woodland with just one confirmed. On the suspension report, one out of school suspension at ALT, an in school suspension at Mount Horeb, two in school at Woodland, four in school suspensions at the middle school, and two out of school at the middle school. Thank you, Dr. Mingo. Good evening and welcome to the June 10th meeting of the Warren Board of Education. I have only a couple of comments for this evening. First, thank you to the American Heart Association for their donation of physical education equipment valued at $1,300. This donation is a thank you for the middle school's participation in the American Heart Challenge. More than 200 middle school students registered to participate in the American Heart Challenge, raising more than $18,500. The acceptance of this generous donation appears on tonight's agenda for approval as item B-19. This year, there will be three three-year Board of Education seats appearing on the November, sorry, November 5 general election ballot. If any member of the Warren community is interested in running for election to the Board of Education, please know that the deadline to submit the nominating petition is 4 p.m. on Monday, July 29th at the county offices. Prospective school board candidates can download candidate information from the New Jersey School Boards Association website at the NJSBA School Board Candidate Kit. The School Board Candidate Kit includes information about nominating petitions, legal qualifications for school board candidacy, and the role of the school board member. Important dates on the school election process are also included. We have also provided the link on the district website. And that is all I have, Dr. Mingle. Thank you, Mrs. I have a few announcements tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of our administrators, teachers, staff, parents, uh, PTOs for all the different end of the year events that are going on. So we're in the midst of that time of year where there are class parties, field days, trips of all kinds, um, fifth grade event, there have been events uh, almost daily at, uh, for the last couple of weeks for the eighth graders. So things going on all over the district. Thank you to everybody for making those happen. I also have an announcement of a new program that we'll be rolling out next year that I'm, I'm really excited to share, which is a new partnership with the Basking Ridge YMCA, which will offer to all parents who wish to explore it, a free water safety program for students who are going to be in second grade next year. So this program, which will be partnered with the Basking the why that's in Basking Ridge, as I said, is completely free to participants. We will provide transportation as a school district to the children during the school day over the course of somewhere around 10 lessons with the goal that 
Every, every child who grows up in Warren going to Warren Township Schools will have the ability to learn how to swim before the end of second grade, whether that's through our partnerships or on their own. Uh, this will be with certified water safety instructors at the Y with a focus on safety for all of the children in the community. So we're very excited about the partnership. Uh, more information will be going out or actually just went out to parents of current first grade students. There's a brief survey asking if you think this is something you'd be interested in for your child. We know some parents have already uh, instructed their children in, in water safety, but for those that haven't or would like a, a refresher with professional instructors, we're happy to provide that service starting next year. Also some congratulations. The Somerset County Fire Marshals Association awarded many of our students with their highest prizes for the uh, county, uh, sorry, the state contest for fire prevention. Elizabeth Wallace from ALT won first place in the kindergarten through second grade category. Jolie Valentin from Woodland School won first place in the third through fifth grade category. ALT's Tommy Nolan had second place in K2. Woodland's Annika Manabartha took second place in grades three through five. Woodland's Grace Klein, third place in K through two. And ALT's Juliana Musumeci took third place in three through five. Congratulations to all of those students and their art teacher, Mrs. Martin Soreo. If you're keeping track, that's all the places in all the grade levels uh, in the county competition through students at ALT and Woodland School. And congratulations to seventh grade student, Constantine Bellman for earning a bronze medal in the New Jersey Speech and Debate Online Festival. Constantine competed with over 100 students in this rigorous competition, which was celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And now we'll turn to a congratulations and a celebration of our middle school softball team. And we'll, I think we're turning it over to Mr. Villar to start that process. Good evening, Dr. Mingle and members of the Board of Education. First, I'd like to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to recognize and celebrate our 2024 WMS softball team. Some recognitions that go along with that. First to Coach Rizzolo in his first year coaching with us and Coach Romero in his second year coaching with us. This is their first time coaching together. They did it brilliantly. They were very communicative on the bench. They were very supportive of our student athletes. <laughs> I want to acknowledge the hard work of Mr. Bayacek, who is our athletic director here at the middle school. We had a very wet spring, oftentimes meaning that we could not play in our fields. When you have to reschedule games, it means buses, it means umpires. There's a lot of uh, business that goes with that. Uh, and he did a fantastic job of making sure that our girls were well supported and had the opportunity to, to play softball. Uh, and as then part of that, uh, Mr. Pacero and the town rec, who when our play fields weren't available to us and we were supposed to be the home field, made sure that we had the facility, the district of municipal fields uh, behind the city hall available to us, which is a great facility. And I just love the fact that our girls got to play on their home field and celebrate at home. Uh, but let me get on with, with the main show here, which is that to say congratulations to our 2024 WS Girls softball team. Um, in middle school, we play sports for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that it gives students the opportunity to demonstrate leadership amongst each other and for each other. Secondly, that it develops confidence amidst diversity. Right? It's not always about winning. Sometimes you lose. It so happens that this team didn't lose. So, <laughs> right? that, that, that's just great. Um, but that occurs. And lastly, it gives them the a, a, a ability to strengthen their ability to cooperate with one another, participate and support each other. And that's what this team, that's to me, is really the hallmark of this team, is how supportive they were of each other. They cheered for each other, whether they were down in a game, whether they were up in a game, uh, congratulated each other, and just, just took care of one another as a team. When you were with them on the sidelines, on the bench, you got the sense that they just really enjoyed being with each other. And there's a real sense of camaraderie there. And I, I think that's the real success to win. But we also do recognize that they, for the second year in a row, have won their championship, which is the Central Jersey Junior Softball Athletic Association Championship. To my knowledge, our softball team has never won back-to-back -back championships. This is a very impressive feat, and we commend them for their efforts. Yes. We have the team step up and, and let's get some pictures. Mr. Pilar, come on over. Dr. Mingle, sure. go join them. We should all be in the picture. The board should, why don't we all? Yeah. 
You are all more than welcome to stay and watch the very interesting, <laughs> riveting, in fact, business of the Board of Education, but you are not required to do that. So if you would like to leave, you may now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, Carol. Sorry. Have to tell them otherwise. Yeah, they don't. Like, should we stay? Yeah, it's very awkward to not feel like you're. You want to be. As we've allowed everyone to clear the space. Okay, board, we have a discussion item this evening. Wait one second, let it move out. Okay, on the agenda tonight for board discussion are options for proposed changes to the 2425 and 2526 calendars related to election days. In addition to this being noticed as part of our agenda, uh, community briefing also was sent out on Friday so that the public would be aware that this conversation was taking place. As everyone is aware, the primary election was held last Tuesday and three of our schools were used as polling locations. In order to give some background for the conversation we're going to have here, as well as uh, background available then to the public, I'm gonna ask Dr. Mingle if you could please review for us um, how the um, polling was conducted on Tuesday and, and how things went. Sure, thank you. For those that um, may not remember or, or maybe didn't know, we had polling going on in three of our schools, ALT, Mount Horeb, and the middle school. Central and Woodland were unaffected as they were served by the, the high school polling location. At each of the schools, we talked about this a few months ago as we were in the planning stages. At each of the schools, our security compliance manager, first Mr. Lorimore and then Mr. Alfaro, along with Mr. Pate, our Director of Operations, Mr. Hagel, uh, Ms. Smith as one of our principals, who's also a certified school safety specialist. Uh, basically our whole team met regularly with Warren Police Chief Ferraro uh, and members of his team, including OEM, Township Clerk Reese and others to make sure that we were ready for uh, the day and, and what that entailed, which included uh, building tours with each of the three principals, contingency plans developed for all kinds of potential scenarios. Uh, and what always, what you always hope is that you do a lot of planning and you don't need to use any of it, which is exactly what happened on the primary day. So everything was exceptionally smooth. Uh, the only areas of, of pain points were minor traffic flow and parking issues, which we would easily be able to iron out for the future. Um, but our internal security and the security provided by the Warren Township Police out of sight and 100 feet minimum from the polling locations all worked exceptionally well. Our students and families were great, considering that there was some disruption with parking and traffic flow and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm very happy to report that there were no issues uh, during that day. Uh, like I said, minor things like making sure the signs got back to the right place, making sure everything was cleaned and locked up uh, because the polling continued well past the end of our school day, uh, but extremely smooth. 
like I said, very minor adjustments for parking and traffic flow. Otherwise, nothing. Okay, that's uh, good to know. Thank you, Dr. Mingle. Um, after the Tuesday uh, polling um, and elections, the ad hoc calendar committee met to review uh, the how the uh, elections were conducted and whether or not any changes needed to be made to the calendar going forward to accommodate the use of school buildings for polling. Um, so I'm gonna next go to Ms. Keller to give us the readout for the ad hoc calendar committee meeting. This is on. <clears throat> so yes, to Mrs. Zahn's point, we met the day after elections. So it was on June 5th that we met. Um, Dr. Mingle gave the committee members an overview, just like he had done of how the day went. And we discussed basically a few options for how to handle the calendar moving forward. Um, the committee decided to, instead of making a decision to recommend to the board that we would actually open this up to the full board for discussion. So it's a little bit different than how we normally handle committee readouts and recommendations. So the two options, let's let's call them the options, which is what went out to um, the community were, let me just pull off the <clears throat> Option one is that schools are closed to students for the general election in November. The school year is extended by one day to make up for that lost day. The staff professional development that is typically on Columbus Day will now change to be the election day since the schools will be closed. Columbus Day continues to be a holiday for all students and staff. And parent-teacher conferences move historically that happened that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that week in November now need to shift. And we're recommending it shifts to the week of Thanksgiving. So that's one option. <clears throat> the second option <clears throat> is essentially the same, except we're closing on both the November election day and the primary election in June. And then the staff professional development day that is typically at the end of the school year will shift now to that primary date since it would be closed. Um, I wanted to call attention to, <clears throat> excuse me, why we're recommending parent-teacher conferences move to the week of Thanksgiving, because I'm sure some people initially are might react to, well, why that? Um, but how November will look is essentially being closed on Diwali on a Friday. I don't know what date that is. Come back to school the following Monday for a normal length school day. Close for election day open for Wednesday, close then for New Jersey Teachers Convention. And then originally what we talked about was pushing those parent-teacher conferences just to the following week. But that would mean that then kids would come back and have three half days. So we decided it might make more sense to push those half days to the week of Thanksgiving. We're recommending two half days instead of, sorry, two days of parent-teacher conferences versus three because the third would literally be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and we didn't think that made any sense. Um, and then what that does is give continuity of two full-time weeks in November for students to be in school. We didn't think it was going to be the best idea to have kids go day in, day off, day in, two days off, come back three half days, come back one week, I think I had that number now, and then come back and then kids. And so we thought, why don't we push parent-teacher conferences to the week of Thanksgiving, the, the difference is that it will be two days of conferences instead of three. Um, but then the benefit, which we all agreed, which is tremendous benefit, is that we have two full time weeks of school right now. Um, so, just just one addition, and that is that option two results in two additional days added on to the end of the school year. Uh, option one is one additional day added on to the end of the school year. So at this time, I'm going to open it up for discussion among the board members, just so that the public understands the flow. Um, there will be a public commentary time, as there always is following committee reports. This is an agenda item. We will be able to speak to it at that time. And we will be voting on any calendar after public commentary takes place. So at this time, does any board member have um, anything they'd like to add to this? I certainly think closing on the national election day makes a lot of sense because there'll be a lot more interest and a lot more traffic coming through. Is there a need to close on both? Just understanding 
the option one and two, if we're going to vote on that or if we're going to make a decision. It's at our discretion whether we close at all. The recommendation of the committee uh, for both options was that we do close for the general election in November. Um, the question is whether or not we also close for the primary day. Did, did, uh, did the committee have an opinion on whether we should go with option one or two, or did the administration have an opinion on which they prefer? The committee's opinion was that this was a matter that the full board should discuss in public. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty split, myself included. Do we have a number of attendees for the um, primary election at our schools? I know that being an election year for a presidential race, you usually typically get more in a primary, but it didn't seem like it was that crowded, at least from what I experienced. I don't have an actual number, um, and I don't know what it has been like in the past since we weren't hosting it. I will say that I was at every site. It was, it seemed, this is not a factual statement, this is my perception, that it was a lot busier at ALT than it was at Mount Horeb in the middle school. That could have something to do with the way the parking was though, not what may not have actually been busy. We do expect it would be much busier in November. Um, this was also a higher than typical turnout for the local primary election as well, which may not be the case in future. Primary. That's what I was getting to, like being next year, <laughs> primary is not gonna be presidential year, gubernatorial year, so far, it's proud of it. Again, I'll say this. I was um, initially against having any type of, you know, school being open during at the primary. I attended at Mount Horeb. I voted, and uh, it was very smooth. It it didn't seem of concern, but I would recommend closing for election. Dr. Minkle, do you know if we had any students that were withheld from school because of the elections? I know there were two students where the, par <clears throat> where the parents specifically said it was because of the election that they held their students out. I don't know if anybody else did, but two. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, don't even know if you're able to answer this, Dr. Minkle, but you guys are running the school day today with the principals. Do the principals have a preference for what we do here? Or does nobody really mind? So they do. Okay. So I did, we met the day after the election as well. Uh, and the, the, the preference of the administration was to close on the general election day. There was, uh, that was, I think, unanimous among the administrative team. On the primary election day was a little bit more split, um, but the majority was not to be closed on the primary election day. It does take a lot of resources. I don't want to undercut that. So uh, not just ours. It took a lot of Warren PD resources that week to be here. Um, again, we didn't have to call on any of that, but it was a lot of resources. Uh, and we did have to, at every school is a little bit different, we, but we did have to move some classes. Um, so the feeling was the primary, because it's a lot less traffic, they weren't as concerned about, but that it wasn't the amount of traffic that they anticipate for the general election made it a, a bigger concern there. So I'm I'm going to express what I'm sensing might be the dissenting opinion. But I, so my opinion, just read the proof. So my opinion is I have, I have three reasons for why I would advocate closing for both dates. One, we had said we put all these security safety protocols in place. I luckily never had to use them. And I think the emphasis is on luck, right? So, so do we... Do I think that something could happen? Do I think it's unlikely? Absolutely. Do I want to be a yes vote on something? God forbid something does happen. And I think that's the that's the thing that I wrestle with is, you know, yes, we absolutely, everything did go smoothly. Um, but I still struggle when every day we have all these protocols for visitors to our buildings and then we just two days that well one day out of the year we're saying you know it's okay to have more people coming again no no disrespect or anything against the people who help with security obviously it went smooth and we trust them implicitly but i think that's where i still struggle with being open on an election day primary or not um i think my second sort of pause you know sort of for wanting to close is i feel like any burden on administration beyond what they normally do of having to shift rooms, you know, having to just do anything with traffic or any of that stuff is just added work, right? Um, and it just feels cleaner to be able to just close. Um, and the and the third reason again is similar to the first, which is not too much earlier, we a few weeks before, a month before, I can't remember it's a blur. You know, we had the incident at the middle school, right, where we had that 
fake threat come in. And I definitely absolutely thought, oh my gosh, you know, that was a two hour delay, I think, basically for students. And so what happens if anybody just happens to do that on the day of the primary? And now all of a sudden you're talking about a lot of chaos, right? Because now you have people showing up to vote, you have the students being there. So I, you know, I sent my kids, I think there were parents who, because of the short notice, they would have preferred keeping their kid home, but but couldn't. Um, so I think there's a lot of different opinions on this and, you know, feelings of, you know, security, but that's that's kind of why I was advocating for, I'm not gonna be upset if we don't do that, but I that's why I was advocating. Gentlemen, I'll, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I, fine. I wasn't, I wasn't going to add anything different than what I said earlier. But yeah. we got to go public. Okay. Um, I do have some concerns about having an additional day added to the end of the school year. And the inflexibility that is increasingly I mean, something we face, especially as we approach the end of the school year and we have some of the activities for our students, to take a, um, a school day in the beginning of June away from how we wrap up the end of our year and um, add, add it on, tack it on, it just, it's beginning to feel like there is, that is not perhaps the most flexible and um, forward-thinking approach to our county. I just offer that as well. Yeah, and remind me, the high school... The high school is, is remaining open. open. The vote. Yes, that's correct. As are any number of schools restricts, it's not, there's not a uniform approach to this as I understand it. Right. Any other comments? Okay, so what we're going to do with this, I'm sorry, Rich, did you have something? I think that I think that businesses should be closed for a bunch. So I think applying that logic, you know, and encouraging people to get out and vote and making it the big deal that I think it is, especially for the main election, is something I think we should follow as a board. Okay. I mean, there are definitely businesses that provide an hour or so as a break during the day to go out and vote. So they do make it a priority. So if that's an indication of what the traffic is, those can be. <laughs> okay, if we have no further comments in the discussion portion, then how we're gonna proceed at this point is to committee reports, public commentary, and then when the agenda items are called, we'll pull A5, which is the calendar item. And the board will make a decision on option one or option two. Is that Dr. Mingo? You think a way that does that work for us? Um, and then that will be put in then for a vote. Okay. So moving on at this point, last chance, guys. Nope. To sorry, one question. Sure. And maybe we get to when we get to the options. Whatever option is put forward, if that option does not pass, does that automatically mean we adopt the other option? No. The, the the default is the calendars we have currently. That we have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll have a. I think we will move option one or option two and vote on it. And if that one doesn't pass, move the other one and vote on it. If neither of them pass, we are stuck with the calendar we have. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Curriculum and Technology Committee, um, Mr. Toy. Yeah. We had four areas of discussion, um, two of them kind of material, two of them updates. The, the more material ones were actually the, the swimming uh, that you already talked about from right up under the knife and I would have done so. I'm not going to report on that, everything that basically what you said. Um, and what, what I would say is the committee were very supportive of that. Very. And the second one was um, Mrs. Tugia and Mrs. Uh, Madugno. Um, who are heading up the English language arts project, looking at uh, resources for reading and, and writing, uh, presented the conclusions of that group to the, to, to the committee, which were that they are piloting a company called Collaborative Classroom and their materials. 
the feedback from teachers is very positive. They seem to enjoy working with the materials and the way that it's structured. Um, they will continue uh, through the school year. And the, the ELA committee will continue to uh, to meet. So I don't think it's done, but but so far it seems to be going very well. So I like the materials and uh, and yes, down that path. The committee voted yes on all of it. The only other two things were not minor, but we discussed curriculum projects, and there's going to be a longer meeting to discuss that in August, I think August 19th, before that goes uh, to the board. And we also looked at the uh, revised standard curriculum revisions and some post COVID trends, which is something we pretty much do. In those meetings anyway, and there was no red flags in, in any of that. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Tor. Yeah. Moving on to Finance, Operations, and Security Committee. Um, the committee met Monday, June 3rd, with all members present. This was the last meeting of our fiscal year, so much happened. Uh, the first item covered by the committee was a resolution authorizing Mr. Hagel as the business administrator to move end of year monies um, over to capital reserve up to an amount not to exceed $3.8 million. Um, that resolution appears for approval tonight as an item B16 on the agenda. We moved on to the discussion of the five-year capital improvement plan. Part of the five-year capital improvement plan includes the replacement of security cameras in our buildings. The committee, um, recommends approving submission of an application to, for a COPS grant, which may, if granted, partially fund that effort. That appears tonight for approval as item B13. The committee also sought additional information um, regarding an array of options for planning for future development and growth. And accordingly tonight as option, as item B17 on the agenda, there is an approval to seek additional information from our architects in furtherance of that goal. The committee recommends moving the five-year capital improvement plan. That appears for approval tonight as item B12. Also appearing tonight on the agenda and recommended by the committee is the five-year security plan. That appears as item B11. The committee also recommends moving the acquisition of printers um, to the full board. That appears tonight as item B15. And finally, appearing on tonight's agenda um, is the actual agreement uh, for a share in pilot funds, which will be entered into by the Township Committee and the Board of Education. That document and agreement appears tonight for approval as item B14. There was a continuing conversation, it's just an update of the Woodland School Crosswalk, and that is continuing to be pursued by uh, Mr. Hagel, uh, Mr. Crane of the Town Committee, and the high school in the county. So further updates on the crosswalk will be coming in the future. And that's all for the Finance Committee. Personnel Negotiations Communication Committee did not meet so moving on to the Ad Hoc Strategic Planning Committee, Ms. Kelly. Okay. The Ad Hoc Strategic Planning Committee met on May 23rd. Since this is the first readout, I thought this is a good opportunity to just give a little bit of an overview of what we mean with the strategic plan, what that is. Um, so back in 2019, the board and administration started a process called strategic planning. This is an effort to determine a five-year strategy for the district, area of focus and priority. The process includes heavy involvement by members of staff in the community. And the strategy directly correlates to the district goals, committee goals, and the work of the schools. If you look at the end of the agenda, you'll see all of that, and that goes right back to that strategic planning process. We've been implementing against that plan since 2020, which that process, that implementation process, has also included staff in the community with quarterly evaluations, progress updates, and action plans to make sure that we're constantly tracking to that initial plan. Um, it's now time, five years later, to develop a new strategic plan for the next five years. So the first step in that process is to hire a facilitator to manage the strategic planning process. Uh, the committee met on May 23rd from 12 to 4. We heard from three potential partners and had time to regroup and discuss amidst the presentations. 
Um, one area of consideration for us as a district is the high school is undergoing their regionalization. Um, so that has also started to pick. So we're very sensitive and aware to the type of community outreach that our strategic planning process might have in the context of what the high school will be doing. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're always cognizant of that. The next steps for the committee are to decide on a facilitator and recommend that for board approval. We met earlier this afternoon. We have another meeting planned for tomorrow. And then you'll see the goals for this ad hoc committee on the agenda tonight. It's A9. Thank you, Ms. Keller. At this time, we will move into the first opportunity for public commentary. This is the first of two opportunities for public commentary. I ask that anyone interested in addressing the board, please raise their hand or use the raise your hand feature on Zoom. Each speaker is asked to limit their comments to three minutes. Please begin your comments by stating your name and address and by directing your comments to the presiding officer. Uh, that will be me this evening. Please know that the Board of Education welcomes and encourages input from the public. Public commentary is intended as an opportunity for the board to receive such input, but is not intended as a Q&A session. Following public commentary, if appropriate, the presiding officer or the superintendent may provide some response. For this first opportunity, we ask that your comments be limited to items that appear on tonight's agenda. There will be a second comment opportunity for all other comments later in the meeting. So at this time, looking to our audience, we have no audience, so I'm moving on to Zoom. Ms. Villanova? Hi, um, Courtney Villanova, 13 Briarwood Drive East. Um, I just wanted to share kind of my, my opinion or personal preference for the topic of the um, election day um, opening or closing. So um, I agree with all of the reasoning that uh, Mrs. Keller had stated um, in terms of the extra, you know, taxing on staff for the planning for the um, uh, election days, all of the, you know, what ifs could happen, et cetera. Um, the other, the other thing I'll note, my son's in kindergarten at Mount Horeb and, you know, while it's the end of the school year anyway, um, for the primary election, um, you know, and he is in kindergarten, it does add some disruption to the students as well. So he was sharing with me that he had to pick up like all of his, you know, stuff out of his classroom on the day before and move it to another classroom and then the routine was disrupted, et cetera. It's just something that I don't think necessarily needs to happen. Um, Outside of the whole, you know, school scenario as well, I think as a community member and a voter, um, you know, there could be a potential dissuasion of voters um, to attend if there's parking issues, um, et cetera. So my, you know, my personal preference would be um, to close. Uh, I think Mrs. Zahn, you had mentioned uh, it was an extra day, which I guess, you know, technically comparing to our current calendar is an extra day tacked on. But um, I guess just to clarify, I'm under the impression that it's not an extra day of school. There's 180 days of school. It's just a move day. Um, from all the parents that I've spoken to, um, I actually think that would be a benefit. Um, I'm under the impression that our school actually closes quite early compared to other New Jersey schools. Um, to the point where it actually can become problematic for parents and camp days and things like that. Um, so I don't know um, if anyone would actually really mind that, um, you know, day after ending on, on school. I personally wouldn't. Um, but the one question that I also have is, um, I think, Ms. Keller, you mentioned that there's a lot of planning that happened and we put a lot into like the security, et cetera. Um, were there any costs that we incurred uh, for that planning or security, et cetera, from a financial perspective that we had to pay from our school budget? Um, because if so, then that would just be like another reason to um, avoid that per se. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Villanova. Ms. Andrews. Uh, the president of the WTEA. So in regards to the calendar, 
I did take the time to speak with a bunch of different staff members and I did pull our executive board to see kind of the pulse of how the staff were feeling about last week's primary election being held in the schools. And when speaking to staff members who were directly affected, they did say yes, that there were adjustments that had to be made and there were slight inconveniences, but overall there was a feeling that they were, they felt very safe. They were not uncomfortable or nervous at any point. Overall, the classes were met pretty undisturbed and fairly smoothly and the day went um, really without a hitch. So I just wanted to give you the feedback that the teachers gave to me and the and the other staff members that were present on, on the primary election. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Andrews. Do we have anyone else in Zoom that would like to be heard? Seeing no one else. Do I have a motion to close public comment? Motion to close. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed, abstain. Public commentary is now closed. Dr. Mingle, do you have any comments? Yes. Yeah, so the question about whether uh, there were costs incurred. So we did um, compensate custodians uh, to be there an extended day, but those costs are reimbursed through the election process. I don't know. If, I think it comes from the county, not the township, um, but we are made whole for those things. Thank you, Dr. Mingle. Moving on to items for board consideration, Dr. Mingle, do you have any comments? No, okay. Um, does any board member wish to pull any item? Um, we will be pulling A5, but other than A5, any item for separate conversation or vote? Let's see, none, Ms. Kelly? Motion to approve items for board consideration, A1 through A4, A6 through A9, B1 through B19, and C1 through C15. Motion. Second. I will call the roll. Ms. Keller? Yes. Mr. Malfetta? Yes. Mr. Otto? Yes. Mr. Tor? Yes. Mr. Valentino? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Mrs. Zahn? Yes. Motions passed 7 0. Okay, pulling A5. At this time, um, do we have a motion for option one? And we'll take a vote on that and see if that. Can we just clarify option Force. one, option two? Option one would be to close schools on the general election day in November only, adding one additional day to the school year. Moving um, parent teacher conferences to Thanksgiving and moving uh, professional development for the teachers to the election day from Columbus Day. That's option one. Option two is identical, except that it closes also on the primary day and results in two additional days being added to the end of the school year. Mr. Tor. I thought that it probably made sense to put with one forward and see how it goes. Or if you should take it in a different path. We have to, I mean, we have to decide on one. So that seems to be the most practical way to do that. Everyone okay with that? Is my let's, parliamentarian. Let's start with say? one. Let's, let's start with one. Okay. Motion for option one. Motion. Can Second. Take, can you take and let's see what option one does? Uh, so before I call the roll, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Mm -hmm. So this vote is for A5 with option one, which is to close for the November election and plus all the other items that mm -hmm. Mrs. on out. Okay. Okay. All right. Ms. Keller. No. Mr. Malfetta. Yes. Mr. Otto. Yes. Mr. Tor. No. Mr. Valentino? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Mrs. Zahn? Yes. All right, that, post, that motion passes by the vote. Okay. So that is option one is chosen as the adjustment to the calendars. I think that closes our agenda items. Okay. Moving on 
to unfinished business. We do not have any unfinished business for this evening. New business. Although there is no new business appearing on tonight's agenda and noticed to the public, we do have a board member that has requested the opportunity to raise an issue which will appear on a future meeting agenda. So the board will not be discussing this item this evening, but we're gonna give the board member an opportunity to raise it so people know that this is coming down the road. Mr. Weinstein. Yes, so for the next board meeting, I just wanna open up discussion on the cell phone policy within our schools for students. Um, if I understand it correctly right now, they are allowed phones in school, but obviously use during school hours is prohibited. Um, I think it's worth revisiting uh, for numerous reasons that we can probably get into during the next board meeting. I know that's vague, but... No, no that's that's perfectly yeah. fine. So um, just to kind of summarize this, Mr. Weinstein's requested that the board take up as a discussion item under new business at a future board meeting. I know he said July, but our July calendar is super packed. So no we'll discuss that maybe. Okay. But in the very near future, um, for the purpose of revisiting the policy on student use of cell phones in school buildings during school hours. Or yes, just one um, caveat. I, I would say use and or whether they can bring a cell phone to school or not um, is where my head is at. Okay, revisit the policy related to that. Yes. Okay, absolutely. We will put that on the future agenda. Second opportunity for public commentary. This is the second opportunity for public commentary and it is open to any topic you wish to raise to the board's attention. Again, I ask that you raise your hand or use the raise your hand feature on Zoom. Remember the comments are limited to three minutes and please state your name and address before beginning, looking first to the room and moving on to Zoom. Do we have anyone in the Zoom audience that would like to be heard? Last chance. Motion See. to close. <laughs> Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? The second opportunity for public commentary is now closed. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act NJSA 104-11 permits the Board of Education to meet in closed session to discuss certain matters, now therefore be it resolved the Board of Education adjourns to closed session to discuss specific prospective or current employees unless all can be adversely affected requests of open session. Action will not be taken upon return to public session. The length of the meeting is anticipated to be approximately 30 minutes. And be it further resolved, the minutes of this closed session be made public when the need for confidentiality note. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, oppose, uh, abstain. We are in executive session. Thank you.
motion to return to public meeting? Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. We are back in public session and motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstain. The meeting has. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.